Hi. Uh, today we're going to do a non-objective abstraction. Uh, we're learning about modern art, and this will be our last big project before the final. Uh, there's going to be two steps, and it's going to be based on music. The artist that we'll be learning about is named Vasily Kandinsky, and he was born in Russia and then moved to Europe. Uh, and he was going to be a musician. I think he was a, a violinist. And uh, he started to paint. Um, he painted in a post-impressionistic uh, style. He could do realism. Uh, but then he became more and more abstract. He would start to uh, change some of his paintings to look more stylized. He would paint people or horses or mountains, but they were done in a very um, bright, flat color. Then one day uh, he came home to his studio and he saw a painting and he really liked it. He walked up to the painting and it was his own painting upside down and he thought why did I like it so much if I didn't recognize any of the elements on the painting. So he decided why can't I just make a painting about line, shape, and color? Uh, instead of trying to do animals or people or mountains. So that was credited as his first non-objective abstraction. He did it in watercolor um, and it was all about line, shape, and color. So we're going to be analyzing a piece of music uh, and then you're going to be breaking it down into an artwork by repeating the shapes that you come up with from your art, uh, your music. So. The first step, you are going to listen to your music, and I've already done that, and I'm going to let you hear mine, and analyze it. Give me the title of the song, who sang it, so this was Paul Horn and Carlos Nakai. The album they created was Inside Canyon de Shea, which is actually up in northeast Arizona. It's a beautiful area. I've been there before. And so we're going to listen to Paul Horn playing um, a flute. He's famous for playing in different amazing places around the world. One time he, paint, uh, he played his, um, his flute inside the pyramids. And this time he teamed up with a Navajo musician called Carlos Nakai. And he is from that region. So they did a whole album together inside the Canyon de Chez. So as I listened, I started thinking of adjectives. An adjective is a descriptive word. So is your music you're gonna choose? Upbeat, poppin', uh, loud, fun. Is it sad, is it mellow, is it romantic? Those are all adjectives. So let's listen to Inside Canyon de Chez. This song is Tunnel Canyon. So one of my first adjectives was mellow. It's not hot, loud, it's not upbeat, it's more mellow, relaxing. It almost echoes. They actually played the flute out in the canyons and it vibrated off the canyon wall. So that makes it sound mysterious to me. It's not a high pitch sound, it's a deeper sound. So deep was another word I used. hear that bird? So they were outside. Sometimes you'll actually hear a coyote in this album. It felt very distant. There's that bird again. I wonder if it's singing along. And floating. There's something very mellow and just calming and floating. I can imagine floating in the water. 
So now I'm creating shapes, lines for each one of those adjectives. I make horizontal or laying down long cloudy shapes. That's mellow to me. Mysterious. Almost like it's echoing. And I can't quite see all of it. Deep, like it could go down inside it. The distance, I made it from a, like a spiral, but it was sort of flat and just kept coming out. Like the wings of a tree over time. And the last one was floating. So I have all these sort of different shaped, but very soft, floaty, shapes all over my picture. So in the PowerPoint, you can see how Kandinsky uh, went from very realistic to more abstracted to totally non-objective. He had hard-edged paintings that were very sharp edges, but he also had very soft, floating, um, non-objective abstraction. So, once you've gone through the PowerPoint and you've taken some notes, you're going to create a sketch that is based on your song. Whatever song you want to do, write down the title. It could be a contemporary song, it could be an instrumental song, it could be anything you want. Then you're going to tell me who wrote it or sang it and what the title of the whole album is. All right. Then you create your five adjectives. Those adjectives really should reflect it. What happens if your music starts soft and then it gets louder? Show that somehow in your adjectives. Now, I put this together into a non-objective abstraction. That's my part I'm gonna paint. I used a Sharpie. You can use a pencil and then add Sharpie if you want. Oh, there went my song again. I don't want that. Get rid of that. There you go. So, I made it horizontal because it feels sort of floating, sort of um, like mysterious. So, I started with these floating shapes. The long, big, well no, not the floating, the mysterious or mellow shapes right here and they almost like um, fog lifting or clouds late in the evening but it's non-objective they're not clouds they're shapes um, and now I get to decide what color they'll be and I put them throughout the picture some were smaller some were larger try and put some of them off the edge of your painting as if your painting could go on forever the second one was mysterious these kind of Starburst, Starburst sort of, or I actually turned it more into these star-like exploding shapes, but they're sort of, I'm gonna paint them sort of mellow uh, in a light color. My third adjective was deep. So I actually had some overlap. See if you can try and overlap some of your shapes. That'll give you some background, middle ground, and foreground. and draw your eye inside the painting and that actually adds to the deepness I was seeing. So these are the deep shapes hiding behind some of these mellow shapes. Uh, distant is these sort of spiraling um, kind of cloud-like again. So they spiraled. I just started in the middle but I made them sort of flat and spread out. I might even paint these like a pattern um, as I go. So we've got the, uh, uh, the last one is floating. So I have these little bubble shapes moving up my picture. I might want to put some bigger ones in there, we'll see. 
Um, I started with a Sharpie. I don't know where the Sharpie went. Huh. But then, oh, here it is on the other side of my water container. We're using watercolor and a brush and a paper towel to clean between colors. And with watercolor, the basic part of it is a wash. Very um, watery. Uh, and so I'm going to start there. I'm putting water and paint. All you have to do with watercolor is put water on it. It'll reconstitute. And I'm going to start sort of soft and watery to do a wash right over the top of these shapes that look distant. Another fun thing to do with watercolor is when it's wet, you can actually drop in another color. So I've got some blue here. While it's wet, I'm gonna put the blue in there and it'll actually bleed around and move around and help blend. So I'm gonna let that kind of just blend out and see what happens. Anytime you put some shapes in, it's a good idea to put them in at least three places and that will show movement. Your eye's gonna look for all the similar shapes and that causes the person's eye to look at all the painting. So I've got one here, I've got one here, and I've got one here. You can see as it's um, mixing in with the water, it's blending. I'm even going to put a little extra water in there and let it float around. It gives some fun effects. Another important part of watercolor is it's transparent. When that dries, I can put more watercolor over it and it will create layers that make it richer to look at. So uh, another thing to think about, with all of my words, my adjectives, they were all pretty mellow. They weren't bright and exciting. Um, they were more mysterious. And I think of colors like blues um, and neutral colors as being more mellow than bright orange and hot pink and purple. Those seem more upbeat and happy. So I might start thinking of how am I going to use my colors to uh, give the feeling of my music. So I'm going to stick to sort of blues. And so I like these big shapes. I'm going to have some blue in there. And then maybe even to make it a darker blue, I'm going to put just a little bit of black and it's going to look grayish. So maybe these distant ones could be darker. It feels very mellow. This one's going to be somewhere in between. So with abstract, non-objective art, art that doesn't have objects like trees or people or landscapes, your goal is to just enjoy the shapes, the colors, the rhythm, all those principles of design. Um, I got some red, so I'm going to mix it with a blue and I'll get purple. But I have black in that, so it's going to actually be a little darker not a bright flowery purple, it's more sort of a blue violet. Maybe I'll put a little more red in there. And so it's sort of a deep mysterious color. All right. Um, I want to have some contrast as well. So you don't want everything to be similar, they're exactly the same. Um, so these shapes feel very uh, light like. So I'm going to actually do a swirl of color in there and this one's bigger so it feels like it's closer to me and maybe I'll put just a pop of orange right in the middle now it's starting to look a little too fireworky so I need to calm this down so now I want let's see I like sort of the green 
So these shapes might be green. Again, I want to show the movement going down deep. And watercolor is very transparent, so I can see my lines through it. And I sort of want them all floating in this dark place. So I'm going to start bringing in some black. Maybe around here. Ooh, that looks cool. Nice and dark. Because it really felt sort of nighttime-ish, that music. Off in the canyon somewhere. There's some brown over here. I'll mix some brown in there. And then I'll come around and actually make some of my brush strokes follow those mysterious shapes. Now you can sort of see the transparent coming in in the dark. Keep adding a little bit of water. The more water, the lighter it'll be. But then once it dries, you can go right back over it and add more depth and contrast. So even this has already started drying. I think I'm going to do another coat of the black and maybe see if I can get it even darker. There you go. A second layer of watercolor. I'm not rubbing and rubbing, it'll actually start to rip the paper. You don't want to keep rubbing too hard. So this is so far a non-objective abstraction. I'm not trying to make clouds or mountains or canyons. It's more about analyzing the music and using that to create the shapes all around it. So I just keep on working on it. It should take at least an hour or more. And there's two assignments here. The first one is to analyze your music and draw those shapes. So that'll be your sketch. And then the finished painting uh, will be due next Monday. So you'll have a week and a weekend to work on it. It'll be the last project, and this semester's final is actually going to be an art project. So you'll have a week to do it. Any um, late work that you still want to be graded is due next, this Friday actually. Um, so the following week is finals, and that will be your final project. I will not be grading anything uh, after the 14th um, because you would need to focus on your final. Your final will be worth 200 points and there will be uh, directions in a PowerPoint. You'll be able to see it and some examples. Okay? So, I think we'll do a time lapse. So I'm going to keep on painting and I'm mixing up some new color, some blue in my black. And this area is already started to dry so it overlaps beautifully. My green is starting to stand out because of the dark around it. Maybe it'll get lighter blue up on the top. So there'll be movement from top to bottom because the color is changing. With non-objective abstraction, you have, you have to, to keep, keep people, people interested, interested by, by using variety, using contrast, contrast repetition, repetition and pattern. pattern. Whatever you do in one place, maybe try in two more places. I chose three of these. Three is an odd number. So three and five are really active. So anytime you have 
three shapes or five shapes, it makes it more of an active composition where four or two make it very stable. So that composition, think about if your music is sort of regular and, and um, stable, you might put four instead of three. Mine was sort of flowy and moving, so I really wanted to make sure I had three and five shakes. So I'm almost done here. Here we go. Hope you have fun. fun.